Hey, this is Nate with Sky Design Build. This week, I make a $3,800 slip roller for $120 and extra metal around the shop. So I have a client requesting a way to flatten reclaimed corrugated material. I told them I'd figure it out, made a few calls, and got prices back at $3,800 for a roller heavy duty enough to get the job done. For me, that was not acceptable, so I decided to build one and also make it dual purpose, a flattener and a roller. Follow along as I show you how to build the most powerful hand crank roller on the internet. One side of this uh, upper roller I need to make removable. I will explain that later when you see the finished product. But to do that, I am going to be bolting it down through with these pieces. And because of the pressure, I'm gonna need to put some gussets here. So that's just explaining what's going on here. Uh, I've made a couple of changes down here. I'm fixing to plasma cut this, then I'll do the other side because they need to match exactly. Here's a four inch plate that I have that will be going here for extra reinforcement because this is gonna be extremely heavy duty. And I will go ahead and end up welding this to this plate before I drill the holes because again, everything has to line up perfectly or you're gonna be out of round and it's gonna be squirrely. So uh, just explaining what's happening uh, on the sheet. Now we'll head over to the plasma cutter. All right, here I'm using a Hypertherm PowerMax 30. If you don't have a plasma cutter, then of course you could do it with a four and a half inch grinder or equivalent. Uh, the plasma cutter just makes it a little bit easier. I'm using a piece of angle iron for the guide uh, to help make that cut as straight as possible. At this point, I'm marking the one inch hole that I will end up drilling. Using my new Walker Turner drill press, kind of proud of that. It's a 1951 model. I kind of prefer the vintage tools, but does a good job getting through this 3 8 inch plate. After drilling this hole, we will have sides that we can cut down to and give us a slot. Again, I'm doing this here with a four and a half inch grinder. I'd rather do it with the grinder because it gives straight cuts, uh, whereas the plasma cutter would leave a bit of rough edges when it's a handheld plasma cutter. So you're seeing me put one plate on top of another thought it was important that they match up as exact as possible. We'll do the same thing here. Cutting the straights with a grinder, I step in here and uh, cut the, the curvature with a plasma cutter. Now I'm going to tack weld the two together. Tack welding the plates together is going to allow uh, the exterior dimensions and the holes that I will drill through it here shortly to be in the same location on each end of the roller. I chose to go ahead and leave the corners of the outside plates uh, square. This way my four inch, quarter inch plates line up there on the 90 uh, you see me tack welding them to both sides. Again, this is so when holes are drilled through, everything lines up. I learned here I didn't want to be a machinist. Drilling one inch holes uh, through this plate is quite daunting and uh, creates a pretty good mess. Lots of oil, lots of shavings.
Okay, so moving on with the project, we have these round discs here. These are half inch thick, three inch diameter. Uh, our pipe is three and a half inch OD. I did a little mismeasurement. These just slide in and out of the pipe. I wish they were a tight fit. They're not. If we were having this plasma cut or laser cut, that would be one thing, but we buy a machine, but we're trying to do everything with hand tools. So these are pieces I purchased. So I'll figure out a way to make them uh, slide in there perfectly. So I've seen a lot of these builds where when they go to crank, everything's a little uh, out of center. And I'm trying not to do that, trying really hard to uh, make sure everything is lined up properly. So here would be the plan uh, real quick before we just move on with the video. So uh, this was part of the parts list. Here's my bushing. It works perfectly in here with this quarter inch plate and this, this uh, three eighths inch plate. So when it slides in, it mates up perfectly on the inside, which is what I wanted. And then we have this three quarter inch grade eight bolt slides right in there like so. It's going to end up going through there. This is just a mock-up, right? Here's our, uh, these are our inserts for the ends that's going to ride up against this plate. So I want them nice and flat. I've already drilled a three quarter inch hole in the middle of this, which I'll show you exactly how to find that center here in just a moment. So this is going to slide over this. And then if you can imagine the pipe going over this right here and inside of that pipe, this will be, we want a nut inside of here. And what's nice here, and I, I, I might play with this a little bit. So we're really tight. We've got like a 16th right here, which I like. And then the nut uh, bottoms out on the shoulder of the bolt. So if I tighten these really tight, there's very little play here, which is what I'm after. I might even make it a little more tight. This, this bolt needs to be tight to this. That way when it's turning, it's not loosening up, it's not doing anything like that. It's actually tied in there, but I still wanna be able to remove it and I'll show you why I need to remove it later uh, because I, I'm making this a dual purpose machine. So anyways, just wanted to explain that for a moment. So whenever you see me come back here in a, in a bit in the video and I am uh, figuring out a way to center this, I'm gonna show you. I just wanted to explain this because some of you may want to build this uh, yourself. And if you do, there you should know the reasoning behind what I'm doing. Okay, so we take the roller inserts, put some marking ink on them, just using a Sharpie, check the diameter with your calipers, take half of that as your radius, and then go around and mark from several locations. You will end up with your lines crossing over at the center point. Take a hole punch, mark the center. This will help your drill bit stay lined up when you get to your drill press. The little insert there into a drill press vise, which helps keep it stable and flat while you're drilling those holes there in the center using plenty of oil. Now we'll take a, this is basically a spare bolt I had. I put a nut on it and then sandwiched the insert between another nut to help keep it all lined up. This way, when you go to tack weld the nut on the outside, everything is sandwiched nice and flat. Quickly tack welding all the way around and then coming back and welding the nut solid to the insert as we certainly don't want the nut to break loose while we're using the roller. Now out for a quick quench.
Here you've noticed me cutting some more pipe. I had miscalculated earlier whenever I was going to be flattening some corrugated steel and I miscalculated how much it would stretch. So my 30 inch roller was not going to work for me. I needed uh, 36 inch rollers. So I had some more spare pipe. So here I'm, I'm cutting several new pieces and just want to make sure you use a, a level here so your cuts on the end are as straight as possible. Quick cleanup on the pipe outside versus in the shop. It helps keep the contaminants down for breathing. And hopefully uh, the 36 will work fine and I won't be back out cutting a 40. So marking basically four corners of a circle, I had some leftover material from when I had done a repair on a vehicle recently. And so this is basically sheet metal from a rocker panel I had repaired and I cut it into little strips. Now I'm welding it on the outside of the inserts. As you seen earlier, the inserts were a little small for the diameter of my pipe. So this is the way I came up with to help keep it centered whenever they were inserted and we'll end up welding it up, but I'm gonna cut these little tabs off and then we'll bring the pipe over and tap it into the end of the pipe. Which gives it a nice, similar to a press fit. If you were cutting these or building your own or having a machine shop do it, you just wanna make sure that the OD of your insert was the same as your ID of your pipe. The way I'm doing it, I have pressed them in or tapped them in, but to make sure it's nice and flush, I'll use my caliper. I let this hang out a quarter of an inch using my caliper all the way around to make sure that all the way around the pipe, it was a quarter of an inch or otherwise it will turn out of round. The quarter inch, why I left the quarter inch out is to give a place to a weld. I didn't want my weld to be the proud point and rubbing up against the sidewalls of the roller. I preferred the insert to be close to the rollers, the way there was no grinding or hang ups. So I've tack welded around it very quickly. That way it doesn't draw on me. Otherwise, you know, if you put too much heat on metal, it'll pull it one way or another. But this way, tack welding all the way around allows me to come around and put a solid weld all the way around the piece and be nice and strong. And as centered as you can possibly get it without turning a roller like this on a lathe. Now here's a quick mock-up. Got one roller done. Uh, actually, there's several rollers that are completed here, but you didn't need to watch uh, every weld that we made. So what I'm doing is trying to line everything up and make sure that it turns as centered as I had hoped. So you might see a smile on my face there. That was just showing that we're not out of round. We're actually centered. The little idea did work by adding the metal strips around the edge. So putting in the second roller, going to check to make sure it turns true also. And uh, tightening up the ends worked really well that the nuts, that the, the shoulder of the bolt bottomed out on the nuts. So we're able to keep them really tight. I have clamped down here a piece of aluminum and it doesn't have to be aluminum. It was just a rigid piece I had so I could slide up the two ends of the roller up against it to make sure everything was nice and straight. And I have taken a couple of pieces of, of angle iron and put them in place and I will tack weld them to the outsides of the roller. Always be sure to tack first. Tack everything together first that you possibly can before you put any welds of any length on there. You'll be sorry if you don't, uh, usually because it certainly will move on you. Here I'm getting older, so 
Uh, got to put the glasses on, need a little bit of extra light for what I'm doing to make sure I can get things in the right place. That's all that's for. The glasses are kind of a pain. Off and on, off and on, off and on. So everything's now tacked up. Rollers still roll free. They didn't get bound up. I'm taking another piece and putting it in the center. Uh, you can weld this up. Next step of the video, you'll see three places here. One in the center, and you'll see several marks there. I've tacked two pieces together. This is the inch and a half material that's six inches long. And I've tacked them together again, so whenever I drill these holes, a three-quarter in the center and five-eighths on each side, that they drill in the exact same place. Because this is how that fully threaded bolt is going to uh, come out of there and get out of the way so the top roller can be removed. I want the points of the nut facing upwards and I'm going to weld only on the upward portions and not on the sides. You see me marking an X there, don't weld on this side. You'll see why in a minute. The bottom pieces I have cut and this is to give clearance for the nut had you welded there, there would not be clearance. It's good to kind of keep them. I've got markings on there to make sure I can put the right piece back in the right place. Okay, back to this. Here is the insert for the top roller. And what you'll see me doing here is I have the threaded bolt that will go through there. I'm putting another bolt on top of it. I am going to weld them together. And this is because I, at this point, I do not have any idea how I'm going to turn this top roller. So what I'm doing is I'm going to weld this top bolt on and then I will cut the threads off of it. After I cut the threads off of it, I'll drill down through the top and then tap it. And this way, any type of wheel I might want to add later I have a way to hold the wheel in place versus putting a pin or anything of that nature. I can just thread another bolt through it. So we're tapping. You notice they're kind of tapping the top of it. It doesn't need to be real deep. I just wanted to add the, the top bolt head to it. It's not a grade eight, it's a little easier to drill, a little easier to tap. So now we have that bolt all welded up. We've slid it through the steel sleeve onto the insert. I'm sorry, yes, onto the insert. And there's a nut already welded to the back of it. So what I'm showing in this video is that I want the sleeve to move free just barely move free. So it'll turn on the shoulder of the bolt. When it's being pressed upon by the fully threaded height adjustment bolt that we'll put in shortly. See how it turns free there? So now we have it fully welded on the back side and the bolt is welded to the nut. This one will not be removable. So here we take our top piece that we made. This is what allows the top roller to be removable. I'm showing you put the nuts on the 5 8 bolts flat against the back and this allows you to put it flat up against the side pieces of your roller helps keep everything aligned. Also make sure you have enough space to get the weld on the back side. Making sure everything is nice and level before this is welded up, very important. Want to tack weld it here on the bottom first. Tack weld it on the top. This takes a lot of pressure 
So want to make sure it doesn't move or want to bend or break a weld of sorts. So I'm going to add a little gusset here to the sides, one on each side, just adding strength to the unit. So we'll tack weld them on first. After everything's done, let's move, remove the top piece here that has the nut welded to the bottom of it, which gives you a free place to weld those corners. Now everything's nice and strong and won't move on you and you kept your clean corners there. So here we're rolling a piece of DOM tubing. It's about an inch and an eighth. I don't know the wall thickness uh, here, but I'm just testing out the machine using a ratchet. Haven't decided yet how we're going to uh, turn it, but it's making a nice wheel. So I think we might just make a wheel for this to uh, kind of a ship's wheel to be able to turn the rollers back and forth. Looks like it'll work good. Thanks for watching. We have it all assembled. It's working perfectly. Really happy with the way that this turned out. Uh, we've decided to go ahead and make the plans available for probably $20 on our Etsy site, Sky Design Build. And on there, you should be able to download a PDF file, material list, parts list. This way you could send the files over to a plasma cutter, laser cutter, and you're not spending a day and a half on the drill press drilling these holes. If you want to do it in your own shop, of course, you'd be welcome to do that also. We're also looking at putting a smaller version a two inch, two and a half, something like that. So if you're not interested in something this big, uh, we'll have something smaller for you on there. I want to make a quick note here in the last clip you saw me bending a piece of tubing the DOM tubing decided to go ahead and make it into a wheel here it is works fantastic just real quick I'll show you how we did that the wheel just comes right off of the bolt that we welded on here we ended up tapping the head of that bolt welded a socket to the wheel the socket goes on on there it turns just like that fine but we tapped it so we can put this 7 16 bolt right in here in the front and then it just doesn't fall off. Uh, one other quick tip I'll mention is we ordered these rules off of Amazon. They're little metal rules and I believe we'll end up putting them uh, somewhere back in here. So our fully threaded tension bolt, we know how far it is down on each side. Just a simple way to keep track. Uh, but if you like this video and you found some value in it, we appreciate if you like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks.